When I was putting together the, the uh, tutorial list and thinking about all of the things that I wanted to cover with you, this is probably one of the ones I was the most excited about. It's about movement. My light painting for about the first three or four years was all about spinning orbs. And we're gonna do uh, a pretty epic, as I'm sure you can imagine, amount of orbs uh, when we're creating these tutorials. But by the nature of spinning an orb, you're standing in one spot and you're rotating. And so there's a circle that's about one meter across that you stand in and you create your orb. So you're not moving. You're pretty much just standing in one spot the whole time. And so maybe my very first three or 4,000 light painting images were um, standing in one spot and rotating. And there was this moment uh, where I discovered um, blades it was. I, I remember uh, Patrick Archon. Uh, I, I went down that rabbit hole and discovered blades and right in this room uh, with that with that uh, as a background I remember going bonkers from one side of the room to the other uh, with blades and it really got me thinking about movement uh, so let's talk about it uh, to some degree because or even though it sounds ridiculously simple it's quite complex so I'm going to pick a, a light flute uh, to, to talk about this. It's good because it's a good size tool. Uh, it's quite easy to move. Um, so I'm going to start at the beginning. Uh, when you're creating a light painting image, we're thinking of this here as the frame, right? So we've got a basically a, a 4 by 3 or a 16 by 9 or however you decide you're going to crop your images to work inside. And so you're going to think about where you want the light painting to be in the image. Now, if we have something in the background, so when we start going outside to do our tutorials, we might end up having a tree or an object or something that is going to be the focus of our light painting. But for the purpose of this, uh, this exercise, we're just going to work inside this room and like all of the tutorials we're about to do, you can take each of those nuggets and put it wherever you want. But this is what I want you to think about. A couple of things. Firstly, um, if we open the shutter and we just stand in one place and we stand like this, we're just going get to a, get, a, get a giant blob of light, right? So there's a few things. Less is more, in my opinion. A well-considered slice through the frame is really nice as opposed to just standing in one place and, and doing a thing. Now there, it has a place for that. There is a tutorial we're going to do called the, using the intervalometer method and for that we do pretty much just stand in one space. But getting moving through an image and getting a flow in an image is a beautiful way to create really nice flowing images. So how do we do that? Well this is going to sound ridiculously simple but have a think about this. Get your feet moving. Now I know that my frame, right, starts about here somewhere for our image and it goes across to about here. So I've got that much space to use. Now of course, and we're gonna cover this, you can crop your images. We might just grab a slice like this out of it, but what I want you to think about is moving. So there's two ways that we can move. One is side to side, and then here's the wonder of light painting. There's a whole third dimension, and that's forwards and back, all right? So here's the first, if we think about, you know, if we think about this here as a dimension, ooh, that's exciting, but we can be coming forwards and back as well to create depth in our images. And of course, we can be right past the frame, and we'll do a bit of that sort of thing as well. But the trick to moving is this. It's knowing where the beginning is and where the end is because that's the idea of our shot. Side to side on the frame and forward to back past it. And here's another thing really, really important to think about. The length of our exposure is going to determine how much of the background we see. And we'll do that in a little while. So what does that mean? It doesn't mean that we, so let's say we need to do a 30 second exposure in order to get the background. It doesn't mean you have to be in the frame for 30 seconds. Okay, you can either walk in the frame, 
walk into the frame, do your light painting and walk out, or you can stop the light painting tool halfway through the frame. And I'll show you how to do that right now. This is a great trick. Okay, here we go. So we come in, the shutter's open, and you watch what I do, I turn around, I put the light painting tool behind me, and I've turned it off. That's a great trick. So you come into the frame, one, two, three, behind and out, and then move out of the frame. And what's happening now is the camera is absorbing the background, which is sometimes what we want. Not always, but sometimes. So you don't have to be in light painting for the entire time, all right? Okay, so movement is with the feet. Movement is with the feet, all right? Let's make some images. Yes! Oh my god, this is so exciting. This is the serious part of the tutorial now. Things are getting exciting when we're actually creating images. Okay, so let's bring in... Let's bring in the rig. Now, I want to reiterate, I've already touched on this, but I just want to touch on it again. The only reason I have this recorder on the top here is so that I can record what is coming off the camera because I want you to know at all times exactly what's happening, what the settings look like, what aperture and, time and exposure times I'm adjusting, and how it, how it actually looks. I want you to know there's no trickery or skullduggery going on here. All right, so I'm just gonna pause, and I'm gonna set up a bit of a thing, and then I'll come back to you, and we'll do some movement. Alrighty, so I'll cover with you the details of how I've set up this shot and what we're going to be doing. So, we're in the flower shed, you can see the background there, the big light. Uh, I've got the um, Olympus M1 Mark III. Now, I've got quite a wide angle lens on this, but I have it set to... Uh, I have it set to 24mm. Uh, so it's reasonably wide, because um, I want to get a big space, because we're doing our movement, right? Now, I actually just went over while I was changing battery and I grabbed this to put on. Uh, and um, it's a piece of piece of gear that is very, very, very valuable, valuable to me now. Uh, what it is, is it's one of the lens bags that just goes onto your um, belt buckle. And, oh, you got to see a bit of my waist there. And what I love about this, and what I use it for is all sorts of things. So if I'm, if I'm out spinning orbs, I put extra heads in there. But in this instance, I put my torch in there and it just sits there, which is great on the back there. Okay, so let's focus up on, so I've got the tripod out there. I kind of know where it is that I'm going to be. There's a line on the ground and I'll use that. So I've got the torch on. Focus up on the tripod, all done and we're ready to go. Now I'd like to just touch on something quickly while I think about it. Uh, when you're looking at the screen, the recording of the screen, um, it looks really bright. What I'm using is on the Olympus cameras, and I know a lot of mirrorless cameras have this, it's called live view boost mode. And what that allows you to do, uh, and it's a function of mirrorless cameras, is see the background. And the reason I'm leaving that on is I think it's really great for you to be able to see the scene that we're working in in bits and pieces. Anyway, let's get into it. All right, so we're focused up so I can get rid of the tripod out here that I focused up on. So that's a gone burger. I'm making sure that I'm on, uh, making sure that I've changed to manual focus, yes. So it's not gonna go hunting in the dark. Okay, well look, let's make an image. Um, so one of the things that, I'm, that, I, that I do is I go, well, I'm gonna go from one side to the other, right? And I don't wanna be open for too long. So I know it's kind of, if I'm out of the frame over here, I go sort of one, two, three, four, five. So, so you know, maybe five, 10 seconds. So we'll start on, so I'll just start recording the screen. So we're recording the screen now. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to change to 10 seconds. So I'm on 10 seconds, F5.6. Now F5.6 is where I start a massive amount of my light painting images. And the great thing about that is that even the shittiest, cheapest lens uh, can be at F5.6. So we're ready to go, 10 seconds, F5.6, ISO 200. I've got my light painting tool. Let's turn off, let's turn off these main lights. Cool, we can kind of see the background there so you can see what I'm doing. So I've got a two second delay to give me a chance to get out there. And off we go, two seconds. Light painting tool is on. And here I am moving through the frame. So my feet are moving. I'm constantly moving from one side of the frame to the other. And we're good to go. We should have an image there. Look at that. Beautiful. 
Okay, now this is interesting. I'll press play. Now what you're gonna see, what you're gonna see now, I'll press play, is that the background there is way too bright. Um, I've, got two, uh, I've got two lights over there on the background. Um, so I'm just gonna dial those right down now. So that's our ambient light. So of course what I could do to, uh, to change the ambient light of course is do a much shorter exposure time. But I know I want to be at 10 seconds and that's my main deciding factor. Okay, so over in the corner, you're just gonna have to trust me, is I've got a couple of lights on the back, uh, on the back wall. So thinking about our uh, tutorial regarding ambient and uh, ambient light and artificial light, that's our ambient light. Now I've determined that 10 seconds is where I wanna be and F5.6, so I'm gonna dial down that light up the back there. I've got my trusty remote here. And if I can remember, I think we're on B back there. No, that's this one. Okay, so I've dialed them all the way back now. That's right. Okay, so th in theory, my ambient light, and this is great that you're seeing this because this is all the things that we think about when we're light painting. All right, so we'll just go again. I'm not changing anything. I'm leaving the light painting tool at the same power. Let's go, we're at 10 seconds, F5.6 with a two second delay, and we're away. So I'm starting out of the frame, whew, moving through the frame. My feet are constantly moving and let's see how we go. Wicked. That looks so good. I love that image. I'll show you, I'll show you one of the things that I often see that, that can be a little frustrating. Uh, so we've got a 10 second exposure. So I'm just going to start that and you watch. I'm just going to go and stand out in the frame. I'm not going to move much. I'm just going to go like this. I'm just standing, one, two, three, and my head, I'm counting the 10 seconds. I'm not moving, my feet are pretty still, blah, blah, blah. And there we go, we're probably 10 seconds there. Yep, and what do we got? Just a giant blob. I mean, look, there's all sorts of loveliness in there, but not really. So it just shows you that, that moving, moving is really gorgeous. I'm just gonna go again. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Lovely. Yep, that looks really nice. Now, one of the things as well that we want to talk about with movement is not just movement, is not just movement side to side, and I'm gonna do some this way, is also movement in the tool of your hand. Now, whether it's a flute or it's a blade or it's any, any handheld tool, this is the other thing, is moving of the wrist. So you can see this, whenever you look at my images, you know, I'll zoom in on this one. So we'll zoom in. Yeah, there's a really nice section there. So you can see where it's transitioned from the lines on here to the dots. And that transition right there is twisting of the wrist that way. So twisting that way as well as twisting that way. And you get this beautiful, you're coming through the two dimensions. So you're coming side to side, but also in and out like that. And twisting, twisting the wrist and you get a beautiful sort of a transitioning feeling uh, to it if I zoom out again. Now here's an interesting thing to think about, Now I'll just pause that. So here's an interesting thing to think about uh, with, with, uh, with our light painting images. For me, when you see a flute image in a place like this of mine that looks, uh, that, you, that you might find appealing, some nights I will create 20, 30, 40, maybe 50 images of one style like this and find one that I really like. The other thing as well is that you can zoom right in and pluck out little bits and pieces from here. Um, but we're going to do a whole tutorial on that. All right, a bit more movement. Here's what I'm going to add into it this time. Um, looking at that, just for fun, let's experiment. So 
the light on the background is very dim, so let's extend our exposure time a bit out to 20 seconds. I'm not going to change anything with the tool. I'm not going to change the aperture, but I want you to see how it brings out the background. And that's going back to what we were talking about, about exposure time. Uh, exposure time takes care of the ambient light and the aperture takes care of this. So we're going to leave everything the same. We'll just turn these lights off again. Okay, so we are at, we're at uh, f5.6. Again, I'm not going to change that because I'm happy with the tool. We'll stay at f5.6. All right, we're going to stay at f5.6, but I'm just going to increase the exposure time to 20 seconds. All right, two second delay. I'll start out of the frame and I'm going to come through the frame from one side to the other. One, two, three, four. I'm just keeping a nice simple movement. Now the other thing as well that I like is we're illuminating the ground by taking the light quite close to the ground. All right, there we go. So let's take a look at that. This is very cool actually. There's a lot going on here. Okay. <coughs> So what I'm going to do, we're looking at this one on the screen now from that. Uh, it's really nice. There's nice movement. There's nice flow from side to side. But if we press play and we look at that one and then we go back to the previous one, look how, look how much brighter the background is. And so we've changed our ambient light by going from 10 to 20 seconds. Of course, it means we need to wait a little bit longer, but that's okay. I don't mind that at all. Now here's the one, here's what I'm going to do. We talked about doing this before. What if I don't want to be going from one side of the frame to the other? What if I just want to be in the middle? So here's what I'm going to do. We've got a two second delay. So I'm going to go out there. I'm going to start with the flute behind me. I'll show you. We touched on this, we touched on this before. So rather than starting with it here, I'm going to start with the flute is going to be on this side, so facing away from the camera. I'm going to bring it out, I'm going to do a quick little swoosh, and then I'm going to come back behind me like this. And you'll see that even though our exposure is 20 seconds, we're probably only in there for the very shortest amount of time. So we've got a two second delay, which means I can just wander out to my spot where we're focused. Okay, we, we're running now. So I turn the flute on, I turn around, a little bit of a swoosh, and then back up behind me, turn it off, walk out of the frame, and then we wait for the balance of the 20 seconds. And there it is. So let's take a look at it. Ah, uh, you can see a bit of my shadow because I, went, I took it behind me. But yeah, it's just a quick little swish. Uh, I think you can see my feet on the ground, but that's all right. Probably still a little bit too much, but that's okay. What it shows you, uh, what it shows you, what it shows you is that you don't need to start from one side of the frame and go all the way to the other. You can just create something in the middle uh, and you don't have to be in there light painting for the whole 20 seconds. Now, of course, movement is not just left to right. Let's bring the, let's bring the light painting tool past the camera, and I want to show you how that can work. I tell you who's a master at this is the wonderful Mr. Frodo. He is the legend uh, at doing this. All right, let's do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring some movement towards the camera, and I'll show you how, how we can uh, make some beautiful effects with that. So I'm going to start in the middle of the frame again, out here. The camera is running, the shutter's open, so we open up behind me. I'm going to switch, and then watch this. I'm going to come past the camera. 20 seconds, we'll wait for that to stop. Look at that. Oh, <laughs> that's so good. I think what's happening here is uh, sometimes it'll, yeah, I know I've said this to you already, but um, yeah, sometimes it does take a little while to get, to get the shots. That was pretty nice straight away. Let's take a look in. So you can see that it's come, uh, there's a bit of movement, and then it's come right up by the, uh, by the, um, past the camera, which is really nice. Uh, that can be really beautiful for portraits as well. As well. 
So I don't think in this, just for this initial, uh, just this initial bit, I don't think we need to chat too much more about movement. I think you get the point. It's just about moving your feet, getting moving. Of course, there is a safety uh, component to this. Obviously, if you're out on a surface that is uneven, if there's trees around or rocks, you want to really survey the area first before you start doing it. Uh, I want you to be really careful about that. Tripping and falling can be quite dangerous. But yeah, get your feet moving. I will be referring Referring to that a lot, we'll be talking about movement heaps, not just forwards and backs, getting the wrist moving, getting the tool moving. Sometimes you want quite a simple movement, but, um, but yeah, I'm a massive fan of movement. And I've done, I'll show you some images in this room that I've taken where it's just all about being uh, running around and, and going crazy. Movement is good. Woohoo! I hope you enjoyed this visit to the School of Light. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I'll be adding videos all the time. Head over to the Light Painting Tool Shop at the website. There's a huge array of tools I've made there for you to take on your light painting journey. Peace.